we know the challenges we face, including decarbonization, decentralization, and digitalization. The transition is also not simply a transition of the energy sector. The impact of the transition will transform our economy, create employment opportunities, protect our environment and climate, and improve the quality of life of our citizens. Every sector of society has a role to play, and all of us in the energy sector need to lead the transition for the benefit of all our citizens. Technology innovation is driving massive change on a huge scale throughout the energy industry. Collectively, as government, we have a responsibility to ensure that these innovations result in a reliable, cleaner, and more affordable energy system. This requires the right policies and legislative frameworks and a major shift from those regulations that constrain innovation and new solutions. In other words, the rules need to change and provide for decentralized energy with both local government and customers fulfilling a key role within the energy space as opposed to only large scale new generation. Consumers will use the transition to not only reduce their energy bills, but also to actively participate in the energy market. As indicated by Councillor Dijaga, there are technologies that allow for on-selling excess energy into the grid. How do we ensure that in a country that requires additional energy sources and the need to reduce cost, that we can on-sell excess energy into the grid? How do we ensure that we're able to save, through battery technology, some of the energy that is excess in the municipalities generated or even in enterprises and installations that can save that energy for future use? These are issues that we need to engage with, with in this summit and into the future. Consumers will use the transition to not only reduce their, in, in, their electricity bills, or rather this is a repetition of that point, but that we should also be generating through renewable energy, storing energy and selling energy into the grid. We cannot avoid this shift away from the centrally generated model. It is happening already with many new residential and business developments using microgrids and generating their own electricity. Whether we like it or not, electricity demand and the sales are declining, and this affects both ESCOM and municipal revenues. Taken together with our climate change goals, the large-scale utility business model is unsustainable and has to be fundamentally transformed. As the saying goes, the one certainty is change. It is inevitable. The transition requires us to, re to reconsider our entire approach within the energy sector. We also cannot achieve the target of limiting global warming to below 2%, 2 degrees Celsius rather, in terms of the Paris Agreement if we don't scale up renewable energy supply. New energy technologies provide the opportunity to improve lives, save our planet, and grow our economy. Government must take the lead to encourage and support innovation and new technologies to transition to sustainable solutions. This means taking the transition to the next level where we jointly create enabling policy frameworks and coordinate across sectors to embrace and institutionalize this transition. To accelerate this process, we need innovation in our business models, in market design, and in models for cooperation. We must create the right conditions and certainty for investment in our transition to sustainable and clean energy, including investment in new technologies, in energy efficiency, in smart grids, and in increasing the capacity of the energy sector. Let's find strategies to accelerate the uptake of renewable energy in the financing and development of new infrastructure. It is often said that business cannot continue as usual. 
but what does it mean to do things differently to what we did in the past? Apart from enabling policy and securing investment, we also need the right institutional mechanisms to implement this transition. 